This video is about shutter speeds. It's a very short video and it'll take us right to the heart of what shutter speeds are and what they do. So there are three basic elements of exposure and they are ISO, shutter speeds, and aperture. If the aperture and the shutter are not balanced, the exposure will be either too dark or too light. Changing the ISO, which is the camera's sensitivity light, can help correct an exposure problem, but it's not the ideal solution. In the three pictures we see, the center exposure is correct. It has good detail in the brightest areas, called the highlights, and good details in the dark areas, called the shadows. The photo on the left is much too bright, causing the highlights to wash out completely. There's no way to fix this photo in post-production. The photo on the right is underexposed. The highlights and the shadows are too dark. In short, the balance of the shutter speed and the aperture is only working in the center photo. We're going to concentrate on shutter speed first and then come back in another presentation to see how aperture must be adjusted so both elements will be properly balanced. The camera shutter opens and closes to let light in, like our eyelids. The fastest we can open and close our eyes is about a twentieth of a second, but the camera shutter is much faster. It can be opened and closed in a four thousandth of a second or open for minutes at a time. The first published photos using a fast shutter speed were produced by Edward Mybridge in 1877 to settle a bet that California Governor Leland Stanford had made with many other men about whether all the hooves of a horse are ever off the ground at the same time. Stanford had thousands of dollars riding on all these bets. He hired Mybridge to produce a photograph to prove Stan Stanford's point. If Mybridge was successful, Stanford would pay Mybridge $25,000. That's $600,000 in today's money. Now, it took Mybridge two years uh, to get this done. He lined up 16 cameras uh, to accomplish the feat, but he did it. Uh, each camera took a photograph when the horse was in front of that particular camera. It's rumored that uh, Stanford won a hundred thousand dollars from the men that he had wagered and that was in addition to the twenty five thousand dollars that he gave Mybridge. Um, Stanford used a lot of that money to create Stanford University. This 16 frame sequence was created by Mybridge and shown on a special projector called a zopatroscope. Despite Thomas Edison's claim to have invented motion pictures, this sequence was the first to be shown in public. It's a good example of how much the knowledge of camera shutter made Mybridge into a really rich man. Today we take fast shutter speeds for granted. This is a shot that was done by a student uh, and actually any of us in class can take a photo like this if we have the camera set correctly and the lighting is good. This was taken at a four thousandth of a second. Taking this photo is also possible for us if we use a long exposure and a tripod. This was taken with a two minute exposure after sunset. The water is moving during the shot so no details of the water are sharp. The rocks are not moving, so they result in sharp details. This photo is taken at a fifteenth of a second. There's enough movement of his hands to show action, but his face is almost still. These images with motion blur are fun to take and produce interesting results. This one is taken at a tenth of a second. Our digital cameras make it easy to select the shutter speed we want, and have the camera adjust to the right aperture for a balanced exposure. The first step is to set your camera in the shutter priority mode. For Nikons, this is the S mode. For Canons, it's the TV mode. TV stands for time value. 
In these examples, we see how a longer shutter speed created sharp water details at 125th of a second and a fog-like effect at a half second. Note that the aperture changed to compensate for the choice of shutter speed. With fast shutter speeds, a bigger aperture is required to let in more light to balance the exposure. With slower shutter speeds, the aperture has to be smaller to let in less light over a longer period of time. This relationship between shutter and aperture is the most important concept in setting your camera. Without this understanding, you will never be able to graduate from simple snapshots to artistic photography. Note that apertures have different numbers. These are called F numbers. The higher the F number, the smaller the aperture. The lower the F number, the larger the aperture. It's unfortunate that the relationship of F numbers to aperture size seems backwards. There's a scientific reason for that, and it's much too late to change that labeling now. We just have to get it into our heads that higher numbers mean smaller holes and less light. This diagram illustrates how aperture and shutter work together. Each of these combinations of shutter speeds on the bottom row and apertures in the middle row let in the same amount of light, but the results are very different. Note how fast shutter speeds freeze the action. Note how large apertures cause the background to be out of focus. It is the understanding of these effects that allow you to create an interesting photo with the results that you want. This set of photos shows the information in the previous chart, but in visual terms. Faster shutter speeds freeze the action, and slower shutter speeds show more movement. Note that the f-stop changed in each photo to compensate for the change in shutter speed. When you use shutter priority mode, your camera changes the aperture automatically. Please note that the background is in sharper focus with a smaller aperture like f22 on the lower right. The larger aperture of 2.8 in the upper left makes the background out of focus. This effect from larger and smaller apertures is called depth of field. It's a subject for another time. Nobody that's new to photography can possibly understand the effects of shutter, aperture, and ISO in one lecture. Let's just concentrate on shutter for now. Let's do a hands-on activity to help us see how slower and faster shutter speeds change our pictures. Set your cameras on shutter priority mode. How do you know what your shutter speed is and what your f-stop is? When you look through your viewfinder, your shutter speed, f-stop, and ISO will be displayed in the window. If you don't see it, press your shutter button slightly and that information will appear. If you press the info button on your camera, the exposure and all the other important data will be displayed on the LCD screen. Do not tilt your camera down and adjust your exposure. You'll be basing your exposure on the ground, not your subject. Always look through the camera while adjusting the exposure. Choose a moving subject and take a photo of it with a fast shutter speed and a slow shutter speed. Your results should match those that were taken by Sarah Francis in spring of 2019. Because these were taken in the shade, Sarah had to adjust her ISO so she could make the combinations of shutter and aperture work together. This is the best use of the ISO adjustment, and it has very little effect on the quality or color of the image. It's fine to do this ISO adjustment in this situation. This example by Jason Gamble, done in spring of 2019, is also a good example of the differences that shutter can make. This set of shots also required a change in ISO. The bottom photo required a rise in ISO, from 400 to 2000, 
to accomplish a five hundredth of a second in the shade. As in the previous shots, sometimes you need to raise or lower your ISO so your camera has enough sensitivity to accomplish your choice of shutter speed. How do you know if an ISO adjustment is needed? Well, your camera will have a way to warn you. In this display, the f-stop disappeared. This means that the smallest f-stop of 22 was not small enough to accommodate a 5 second exposure. How do we know that this is a 5 second exposure and not a fifth of a second? When shutter speeds get to 1 second and slower, there will be a quotation mark next to the shutter speed number. Okay, let's get our cameras out and shoot some examples of moving subjects with fast and slow shutter speeds. 